you could think, okay, I'm starting to get to know somebody in this um, dating app and boom, whoa, I just got a text message from them. I hadn't given them their number. How did they get my cell phone number? When we started Optory, we thought about all the reasons why people wanted to, to protect their information and remove it from the web. And the places that we started with was things like preventing identity theft, preventing fraud, preventing phishing attacks, preventing doxing. And to be honest, I never considered that we would be helping people with their online dating activities. At Optory, we have a, um, a chat bot and a help desk where we're having a lot of interactions and a lot of conversations with our customers. And they're often telling us what's going on in their personal lives and why it is that they have signed up for Optory to protect their privacy. And oftentimes there's horror stories of I've got a stalker or I was the victim of identity theft or somebody's doxing me or somebody's trying to extort me. We, we get this a lot, surprising a lot. It's very sad and it's very scary that someone is trying to extort me and I'm trying to hide from this person. But after we started Optory, what was surprising is we were getting messages from people saying, hey, I do online dating. And the thing that I'm most concerned with is I don't want my age out there. When somebody sees my profile, they don't know my exact age. And that's something that I'm not comfortable with, with making known to my prospective partners in the online dating apps that I use. Or it was like, hey, I'm recently single. I've been in a relationship for a long time. And now I've re-entered the dating world. And I'm a little bit scared. I'm a little bit hesitant. I'm a little bit cautious. Like I'm optimistic that I'm going to meet somebody great. But I don't want somebody to just very quickly and easily be able to look up my my name or do a reverse look up on my phone number. When you start online dating, hopefully the site that you're on uh, gives you a handle or a different name to use. And you have choices as to how much information you, that you can reveal on those sites. Hopefully it's anonymous enough that you're able to participate in the online dating that you want without revealing enough of yourself that somebody who maybe has an interest in you, but you don't necessarily have an interest in them, won't be able to look up parts of your profile in a data broker site and potentially find out where you live. Maybe they could, they might stop by unannounced. They could find out where your place of business is, uh, what your phone number is, start calling you um, and giving you unwanted attention what we know at Optory is it only takes a few pieces of information to find out exactly who someone is. So at, at Optory, when somebody signs up, we ask for a little more information than your typical online service would. We ask for, as a requirement to have an Optory account, your first and last name, your city and state, and your year of birth. And it turns out if you have those five pieces of information with a very, very high degree of accuracy, you can find who you are online. If you just have a first and a last name, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have the same name. Um, but if you add in their city and state, you really start to narrow it down. And if you add in their year of birth, you narrow it down very, very closely where you can find people with a very high confidence. Most of the, the online dating apps are not going to reveal someone's full name or phone number. Um, I think that it will probably reveal like a first name or a first initial, or maybe a, like a, a handle. But let's say that you um, go on that date or you start interacting with somebody via chat that you're gonna start revealing information about yourself. Like let's say where you work, like, where do you work? You know, you know, you have someone's first name and, and where they work. You could, you could Google their name and you could Google that company. And maybe you've got another piece of identifying information like where they went to college. So now, you know, you have this, conversation like, well, where did you go to college? Or where did you go to high school? Or um, where do you work? Um, and some of that information starts to kind of uh, come out as you're, as you're getting to know somebody. And in the background, that person can start doing web searches that says, okay, now I've got the first name, I've got where they went to college, and I've got where they work. Bingo, I've got a LinkedIn profile, or I've got a Facebook profile. Now I know their, their full name. Okay, so now I know their full name. Now I can go 
back to a search engine and type in the full name and the word address. And now I can see these people search sites that are posting up their full name, their address, their phone number, and their uh, siblings' names. And oh, I just found out that they have an estimated net worth of this and an estimated annual income of this. And they just voted um, Republican or Democrat in the last election. When people are engaged in online dating, I think the online dating companies are very careful to um, try and maintain people's privacy to the best that they can. But once you start interacting with people, information starts to come out and then it can, you, you can start to use a few pieces of information to decide to, to learn who exactly this person is. Yeah, the photographs that you are supposed to put on online dating sites so people know what you look like. If you include photographs with friends, um, it's very easy to find people using photographs. And a lot of the data broker sites that we opt people out of, they will um, clue into social media, um, photos, images, anything that's related to you that they can grab a piece of that has, you know, if a photograph has a piece of um, location information attached to it. It's really easy to find people that way using pictures. So that can be a little bit alarming. You could think, okay, I'm starting to get to know somebody in this um, dating app and boom, whoa, I just got a text message from them. I didn't give them their number. How did they get my cell phone number? Well, oftentimes the person on the other end is skilled enough in web searches that they've been able to figure out who you are. And then it's very simple using these people search data broker sites to find out your phone number. And then all of a sudden you're getting these unwanted uh, text messages or even phone calls from this person and you haven't even revealed your phone number yet. These people search sites that we remove people from, you know, the, the core of what it is that they're selling is someone's home address, phone number, email, but they're also selling all of these other details about your personal life. So what they'll often list is somebody's estimated annual income or their estimated net worth, or their political party. And so that is a, another common reason why people engaged in online dating are, are really loving the Optory service as a way to remove that information so they can interact with their potential partners kind of um, with a clean slate and w without having that, that, that type of personal information revealed before they've got a chance to reveal just who they are as a person, as opposed to what their net worth or their income or their political party is. The data brokers try and post the most current information they have on individuals, but a lot of times it's uh, it's outdated, especially if you move or your marital status changes, which could affect how somebody perceives you when you're doing online dating. Say your marital status has changed and somebody goes and looks you up and finds it being a certain way, uh, that could be inaccurate. So it's it's really important to keep track of your information and make sure it's current or to remove it so that you don't run into problems that could be potentially harmful. I would certainly recommend anybody that is engaging in online dating for the first time to do an assessment and to understand you know, what information is out there on you, um, your home address, even family members' names. Somebody could be online dating and they might fend somebody in some way or have uh, somebody who is a scary individual. And that individual, they could even start to look up who your family members are and begin to attack or harass or stalk them as a way to get to you. So if someone is engaged in online dating, it's a very, very smart thing to take a step back and say, okay, what are the privacy implications? Um, if something goes wrong here, do I need to take a few minutes to do a free scan at Optory, which will go out and search for all of these people search sites to see what information is exposed about me, and then make a decision. Should I start to opt out of those sites to get my home address, my cell phone number um, removed? Um, or am I comfortable with that being online? Or should I pay a service like Optory to have all that information removed uh, as a way to protect myself and be a little more cautious and a little bit more um, security conscious as I go through my online dating activities? Without having to go off the grid to protect your privacy, Optory provides you the option to see where you are on data broker sites and decide whether or not you want to take action or not 
and we can also provide that service for you. I try and keep myself as anonymous as possible. And when I first did an exposure report, I was just astonished at how much information of mine was out there that I didn't volunteer. Because when I think of PII is what we call personal identifiable information. The first word is personal. And I don't give that out. It's personal information. But yet all of these data brokers have it. And there are a lot of ways that other people can get it too. And by using Optory services and just being aware of where I'm exposed online, um, I'm able to better keep my information personal and private. When somebody signs up for Optory, we then have a very powerful search engine that goes out and does these very deep searches into these people search data broker sites to see if you're there or not. And we send out a report where we take screenshots and we'll tell you, hey, we found you on these, on average, about 70 to 80 websites that are posting up your information for sale. It makes a lot of sense up front to do an assessment of where your information might be exposed online and to use a service like Optory to remove that information or at least to do a free exposure report scan and say, hey, I don't have the money right now to spend for Optory. Well, that's fine. At Optory, we have a free basic account that shows you all the places that you've been removed and gives you tips and shortcuts to go remove yourself for free. We have um, many customers that pay us to remove their information. They, outs they like to outsource the work to us. They don't have the time or the effort to keep track of all these hundreds of, of websites. So they say, hey, we're gonna pay Optory to remove, uh, remove me from these places. But others say, hey, I'd rather not spend the money. I'd rather just do this myself. And I'd, I'd love to use Optory to get these free scans and to better understand where I am and, and um, understand where I'm exposed and do, the, do that work myself. And we love that, that's great. We love our free, our free customers that use our platform for free. Um, anything that we can do to help people protect their privacy, even if they use our free plan, we love it, we're all for that. If you want to learn more about Optory, go to Optory.com. We have a free tool called the Exposure Report, which scans people search sites to show you where your information is being sold online. All you need is an Optory account. To get your free Exposure Report, go to Optory.com and click sign up.